everything was pushed up and out. I was just this close to a wardrobe malfunction at all times. There's not enough tape in the world. Hi Glamour, I'm Jennifer Garner, and today I'll be breaking down some of my most memorable looks. Fun! This is 13 Going on 30 from 2004, and it was the first movie that I did with Susie DeSanto, who I'm sure will come up again. Susie DeSanto and I have been collaborators ever since 2004. I can't even believe it's almost 20 years. She has such a beautiful sense of character, of color, of fun, of fashion, and she brought all of that into play on 13 Going on 30. Anything I could have dreamed, she dreamed bigger, and anything that I could have wanted, she had that plus 10 better options in every fitting. So we just had a blast together. Susie had a lot of fun in the early scenes with the 80s styles and looks and clothes and hair and makeup. Certainly some of the color and the neon and the fun made their way into Jenna's 30 year old wardrobe, but mostly she was drawing from her own closet. So it was a real playful take on a more sophisticated palette. Susie and I cannot believe how much this dress keeps coming up and how on Halloween every year there are more Jenna rinks instead of fewer. And I just had dinner with Judy Greer who played my frenemy and we were talking about how 13 Going on 30 is just even more embraced than it was all of those years ago. I think because all of the kids who were 13 when it came out are turning 30 and they are just so sweet about the movie. It, it holds such nostalgia for them and we are so grateful and happy. But here's a crazy fact. This dress, I didn't keep it. It didn't go anywhere. It just went into a warehouse. Nobody knew it was gonna be a big deal. And if you watch old Sex in the City episodes, you will see it show up in a, on a background player, kind of scooting into a theater seat. And it just was, you know, a dress that was pulled out and put on a background player. And then it, who knows where it ended up, but sadly I don't have it. Daredevil 2003. Whoa, I haven't seen that for a while. I had to be cut out of and sewn into the pleather pants every time I had to pee, and that was like a 45 minute undertaking. So I definitely held it, and I had so many chicken cutlet fake boobs in to make Electra's boobs. I think there were like three on each side of different sizes, and everything was pushed up and out. I was just this close to a wardrobe malfunction at all times. There's not enough tape in the world to make this stuff safe. But I also had endless fittings, endless fittings for the Electra costume. The costume designer, James Akinson, would see me every Saturday. I would put the wig on, I would go to his studio, and I had worked all night on Alias the night before, and so I would be almost weaving, I was so tired, and he would just build Electra's look on me, bit by bit by bit. I was so involved with the fittings that I was able to advocate for myself what I was gonna need to be able to move, because I knew I was in stunt rehearsal by then and you know what kind of support I needed in my shoes and support I needed in flexibility I needed in the pants or whatever they were to be able to fight. <laughs> Cause I fought, I fought a lot. I trained with the Psy every single day on the set of Alias. Dawn Lee would show up who is, just happens to be a Psy expert and martial artist stuntman here in town. And he came and would train me during lunch, during whenever the cameras were turning around, whenever I had the tiniest bit of a break. Don was there to work with me and I had all kinds of things I had to do every single day. And I've had the same stunt double for 20 plus years, Shauna Duggins. And so we were on Alias together and she was training with me. So she and I would be outside at lunch. We, were, we would do like, okay, 20 forward, blah, 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 20 backwards, no, 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 right hand, left hand. Now flip it over your hand, now throw it, because we wanted it to be facile. We wanted it to be facile with the size. Alias, 2001 to 2006, costume designer Laura Goldsmith. There are only pros, there are no cons to playing Sydney Bristow. It was just so fun to see what in the world Laura Goldsmith and Michael Wright, who designed the wigs, what they would come up with. We would try to get three uses out of every wig, three, at least three episodes. Some we just were so perfect, we kept and used as they were a couple of different times. Because the wigs were made to fit my head, we would use one, then Michael would cut it, we would use it again, and then he might cut it shorter 
or he would dye it a different color. One where I'm in Vegas and it's like a chain mail crop top with a little skirt and I was shooting that in Vegas without any security or anything because it was the first season, it wasn't that big of a deal. But the night before we went to Vegas was the Golden Globes. I wasn't really that well known. And then more people had been exposed to me and we got to Vegas and the place went bananas. And my young assistant, she was 21, maybe 22 at the time, was literally <laughs> acting as my security. And the two of us were like, what just happened? This is crazy, we can't, we can't, what are we gonna do? And the crew, we were also taken aback because it was just like the light had switched all of a sudden, like in a moment. We were totally overwhelmed, it was really funny. How did they not send us like with somebody to help us out in Vegas in a casino? <laughs> I should have kept that red wig, shouldn't I? I mean, what an idiot. It wasn't even one of the fancy ones, it didn't fit me at all because it was the pilot, so nobody wanted to spend money and it was so uncomfortable, but I wish I had it. And not to mention, I played a Swedish girl. I don't remember a lot of them, but I had a short blonde bob that I loved whenever I got to wear that wig. It was one of my favorites. And I loved speaking Swedish and I loved that, that character. And so um, I wish I had that one too. But the chain mail outfit, no, that can stay. Oh. Do you know, 2007, I remember Vanessa wanting so badly for everything to go well and wanting so badly to do a good job. And as someone who is not type A, I have so much love for people who are, and I definitely understand the anxiety of, I want this, why isn't it happening? And how do I, how can I just force it to happen? She was trying to, force this family and you know just to will it into being and it just wasn't going her way and in the middle of that she found her strength i love her i remember that i really wanted her to have a string of pearls because she thought she should have a string of pearls that kind of thing and so seeing those makes me happy that they made their way um we didn't want her to be a caricature of somebody who was you know so strung tightly. Um, we, we wanted her to be believable and just someone who's just, yeah, who's trying hard at everything in her life. I love you, Vanessa Loring. Oh, Dallas Buyers Club 2013, director Jean-Marc Vallée. I had just had my third child. I was feeling very nervous about just being in wardrobe, being at work. I was a little overwhelmed by the idea of going back to work. I hadn't worked for a long time. I remember that Jean-Marc made me feel really comfortable in my own skin. A lot of my clothes came from Goodwill or to make sure the period was correct. They were vintage. This is a character who was not about um, how she looked. There's no vanity there whatsoever. I really didn't wear makeup, as you can see. <laughs> um, those are my glasses, both of those pair. It was just she wears clothes to get it done. And I loved diving into um, old life magazines from the time and conversations about HIV AIDS. Just reading about what those early doctors felt, believed, saw, what it was like for them. And that was a, it was a really a thrilling movie to be part of. Oh, Felicity, 1998 to 2002. Hannah, I was playing, that was my first Hannah. I loved Hannah. She was just a kind of lost college girl. Loved just being with that cast. I loved being with Carrie Russell. Look at her little cute face. Any of Hannah's clothes could easily have been mine. I'm sure I wanted to keep all of it, except that my ears, I only pierced my ears a couple years ago, so the earrings are clip-ons, and I didn't usually wear clip-ons. I'm sure the glasses were mine, I recognize those. I am so lucky that I got to be part of Felicity. I am such a huge fan of the show. I keep telling my kids they need to go back and watch it. I mean, it's always tricky to be a guest star, but they were so welcoming to me. And JJ's writing, so incredible. Matt Reeves is such a beautiful director. And it was just exciting to kind of dip in and play this little role. The last thing he told me, 2023. This Hannah's an artist. She turns wood for a living. She's a furniture designer. I think that you see that in her wardrobe. You see the artist there and she's a grown up. She's not trying to be sexy. She's not trying to be flashy. She's not trying to be much of anything, but she is someone who wears muted colors, who is restrained in her clothing choices. 
The costume designer was again Susie DeSanto, the same one from 13 Going on 30. She always comes in with a very clear idea with where the character begins and the evolution of the character in her clothes and the color that colors that she would wear to the end of the film. Every single thing is just incredibly thought out and rendered. My favorite wardrobe from The Last Thing He Told Me is a pair of overalls with a pair of high-heeled boots. She had overalls that I tried on, and I said, you know, I got a pair of overalls at a thrift store in Brooklyn a couple of years ago. Um, if you want to try them on. She was like, oh, grab them. And those are the ones we wore in the in the show. Um, and they kind of became Hannah Hall's iconic look, at least for Susie and, and Laura Dave and me. She is, she's collaborative, but she's also, nobody is more prepared. Thank you, Glamour. It's been so fun revisiting some of my favorite looks with you. I'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye, bye, Glamour.